Hallelujah. 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 Oh, God, we give you praise, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you.
All I want is you. Come on, if you believe that from the depths of your heart, cry out, all I want. All I want is you. Oh, I need you, Lord. You're the air that I breathe. All I want is you. Is he the King of kings and the Lord of lords? All I want is Oh, I'm not satisfied. I want more of you, God. All I want is you. Cause here I am to worship. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow Here I am to sing. Here I am to sing. so good to be in the house of God tonight I want to welcome you all here and say uh, to be here with us at Cross Creek Apostolic Church where Jesus reigns and he is Lord amen amen I was listening to a song today that talked about my Jesus and I was like you know that's a good point because you know my Jesus can't do anything for you until you make him your Jesus 
My Jesus is everything to me. My God is everything to me. And when I pray, I want to pray my God and my Savior and my King. And when you pray, you want to make Him your God and your Savior and your King. And He will be everything to you. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. I want to go before the Lord in prayer tonight. We have um, uh, Anissa Scott's great aunt, uh, Fail, and she needs prayer, needs healing tonight. Uh, Sister Allie's mom is in a hospital in Florida um, facing possible surgery. Remember her in prayer tonight that God would heal her and give her a speedy recovery. Sister Mimi Garcia uh, is traveling. She asked for uh, prayers for safe travel. Sister Peter, uh, continue to pray for her healing in her legs and feet, that God would continue to lift her up and strengthen her. Sister Sange Lewis is praying that God would um, allow her to change her schedule at work so she could be in church. So remember her, call her name in prayer that she would be encouraged and lifted up and that she would be able to be in church. And uh, as always, continued prayer for Brother Hilliard, Brother Palmer, Brother Knox, and Bishop Thomas, that God would continue to heal and strengthen their bodies. Let's go before the Lord in prayer with these needs. Father, we give you praise tonight, God. We praise you for all that you've done for us in our lives, the many blessings, God, and countless blessings that you've given us, Lord. And tonight we ask you, Lord, to continue to work in our lives, to touch these, each one of these that's been called, Lord, for, for Anissa Scott's aunt, God, that you would touch her in the hospital and heal her, God. Lord, for Sister Allie's mom, Lord, reach down right now in Florida, God, and touch her body, heal her, and strengthen her, God. Let her know that you care about her and care for her and working to heal her, Lord. Lord, touch Sister Mimi Garcia tonight, Lord Jesus. Give her safe travels and bring her back home safely. Bless her when she's gone, Lord Jesus, and touch Sister Pitter tonight in healing, God. Strengthen her legs and feet. And God, make provision for her, Lord. We give you praise and honor tonight, Lord. Continue, to God, to pray for our elders tonight, Lord, for Brother Hilliard, Brother Palmer, and Brother Knox, Lord, and Bishop Thompson, that you would continue to heal and strengthen them in their bodies and spirit. Oh, we give you all the praise and glory, and we call it done by faith in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise tonight, Lord. We give you praise tonight, God. Can you just praise him and thank him for the work he's already done? Hallelujah. Clap your hands unto the Lord. Give him praise for he is great and mighty. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Get the ushers to come tonight and we prepare to give unto the Lord and sing with our praise team. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Worship with us one more time. Through you, I can do anything. Cause it's you who gives me strength Nothing is impossible Through you blind eyes are open Strongholds are broken I am living by faith Nothing is impossible Oh I'm not gonna 
can do anything. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. How many believe that God can do anything? Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. I want to just remind you of a few announcements before we go to the word of the Lord tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. want to remind you that uh, our revival is coming up. Amen. There it is, July 11th and 18th. Those are our Sunday services at 11 o'clock. Amen. And for all of you that are in leadership, Brother Ellis will be here speaking to us on that Tuesday night, the 13th. I think it's the 13th, amen. Yeah, 13th, amen. He'll be here teaching uh, all of our leadership on the 13th, and we want you to come out and be a part of that, amen. Then he'll be with us on the 15th on Thursday night, amen. So we want to bring people that need the Holy Ghost, amen. Praise God. He's good at leading and instructing and praying people through to the Holy Ghost and then he'll be back with us that following Sunday amen for our Sunday morning service on the 18th amen looking forward to that amen also vacation Bible school is coming up amen want to be prepared for that invite all the kids amen we're going to have a kids crusade on the 25th amen and celebrate our children's ministry. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Sister Allie, if you'll dim that light on me. Praise God. I'm blind up here. I can't see anybody. Amen. Thank you. Let us go to the word of the Lord tonight. Amen. And we're going to start, of course, with the same scripture that we have used for this series. In Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and verse 23. 
Maybe by the time we're done with this series, you'll have it memorized. Amen. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, and faith, meekness, temperance, against such, he said, there is no law. Amen. Amen. Why don't you say that with me? But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, and faith, meekness, and temperance, against such there is no law. Amen. Let us pray tonight. Father, we love you. We're grateful for your word. It truly is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. We pray tonight that you would open our understanding, that your word would find a lodging place in our hearts, and that your perfect will would be done in each and every one of us. We give you thanks and we give you praise in Jesus' name. And everybody say amen. You may be seated. Praise God. Amen. And I did fail to mention that starting Monday, the 6th, we will begin our prayer and fasting for the revival. Amen. Amen. And I'd just like to encourage you to pick a day and pray and fast. Amen. For the revival coming up. Amen. Pray every day. Fast when you can. Amen. Praise God. So tonight, obviously, we are going to talk about the fruit of the Spirit of faith. Amen. Amen. Or faithfulness, if you will. Amen. Praise God. In Matthew chapter 25 and verse 21, the Bible tells us, His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. He said, I will make thee a ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. We want to hear that when we meet the Lord, don't we? Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Amen. So obviously, faith tonight is not the same as faithfulness. Amen. Amen. He that cometh to God must believe that he what? That he is and that he is a what? A rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Amen. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. We must have faith to believe God for salvation. Amen. Amen. So, if we have faith to believe, and we're talking to believers tonight because we are talking about the fruit of the Spirit being manifested in a believer's life, amen. So if, if you have faith to believe, then we all must have faith to believe, amen. Amen. So having faith to believe is one thing. But continuing in that faith is another thing. So what am I talking about? Well, we've been talking about love and joy and peace and long-suffering and gentleness and goodness and faith. Tonight we're talking about faith. Amen. I, Paul's not writing to us here about having faith to believe for salvation. But he's talking to us about continuing in the faith. In other words, continuing in the love of Christ. Amen. Continuing in the joy of Christ. Continuing in the peace of God. Continuing in suffering or long-suffering. Amen. And waiting on God. Continuing in gentleness. Continuing in his goodness. So we would say that what Paul is really talking about is he's really talking about faithfulness. Amen. I must be faithful. Amen. 
Amen. Because we all come to a place that we got to believe God for our salvation. But that's only the beginning of the journey. After I have received this Acts 2.38 experience, if you will, I must continue to walk in the faith that's been delivered to me. Amen? Amen. Romans 12 and 3 says, For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think more highly of himself than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. Hello. God has given us all a measure of faith. That faith does us absolutely no good if we don't walk in that faith. We must learn to exercise that faith. Amen? Amen. So some mistakenly suppose that because they have faith, then they are automatically faithful. But that's not true. Amen. Paul was seeking to instruct the church that manifesting the fruit of the Spirit requires not faith, but faithfulness. Amen. Praise God. Each, of a, each aspect of the fruit builds on the previous fruit. Amen. We know that God is love. Amen. That's the very first fruit. Amen. But you can't have joy without having the love of God. You can't have peace without having joy. And you can't suffer long without having love, joy, and peace. Hello. You won't be able to be gentle without the other fruit. Amen. So, in other words, Paul was instructing us that each fruit, depends on the previous fruit. Amen. And so, at this point in his writing, it is important to realize that all of the preceding aspects have very little value if there is no faithfulness, hello, if there is no faithfulness and manifesting, amen, each of those fruits in our lives. Amen. Praise God. If we don't have love, it doesn't do me any joy, to, any good to suffer long. Hello. Amen. So after all, what benefit is a tree that it doesn't bear fruit? We are to be fruit-bearing Christians. Amen. And so a tree that only bears a little bit of fruit is not very profitable, is it? Amen. A tree that bears fruit inconsistently is not very beneficial. And if you remember the story in the Bible in Matthew chapter 21 that Jesus walked by the fig tree and it didn't bear any fruit and he said what? Cut it down. Throw it into the fire, for it's not profitable. Amen. Amen. If it didn't bear any figs, it was really just there taking up space. Mm. Now we're talking about the spiritual application of that tonight. That God has filled us with the Holy Ghost. God has wiped away your sins through the waters of baptism. We have become new creatures in Christ Jesus. Hello? We have been, he said, old things are passed away, and behold, all things have become brand new. So we're new in him. Now God is patient, and God gives us time to grow and God gives us time to manifest fruit. But he is still the fruit inspector. Or he is still the farmer, if you will. And one day we're all going to stand before him. 
And we're going to give an account of every deed that we have done. And if we have not been profitable in the kingdom, hello, you think he's going to overlook it? You think he's going to pat you on the back and say, that's okay, go ahead on in? No, I think he's going to say what he said to this fig tree. Amen. I've given you time to bear fruit. But all you did was encumber the ground. And you never produced any kind of fruit. So therefore, cut it down and cast it into fire. Because you're good for nothing. That's a pretty strong mandate to you and I as Christians that we just can't get the Holy Ghost and sit on a seat and do nothing. God expects us to bear fruit. Mm. <laughs> Amen. God expects us to bear fruit. Amen. And again, in Paul's writing here in Galatians chapter 5, amen, he's talking to the believing church about being faithful in the kingdom of God. I must be faithful, amen. So we see from this verse, not only in Galatians, but also in Matthew 21, that God expects faithfulness. Mm. God expects faithfulness, amen. Praise God. Amen. He expects us to bear fruit. So the word faith, as found in Galatians 5 here, comes from the Greek word pistis. Amen. Which means persuasion or moral conviction of the truthfulness of God. Amen. It especially is reliant upon Christ for salvation and abstractly cons consistency in such profession. Amen. So in other words, God expects us to continue in the faith. Amen. God expects us to bear fruit. God expects us not just to take up space. Praise God. Amen. So, in various commentaries, writers tell us that Paul was referring to this consistency of our profession of faith. That if I profess to be a Christian, then I'm also going to consistently represent God well. I'm going to represent him, and people are going to know that I'm a Christian because I do show love. I do have joy. I do have peace. I do have, I am long suffering and gentleness and goodness and all those other things. Amen. And how do they know it? Because I am faithful to the characteristics of a Christian. I am faithful to the attributes of God. Because God, God is all those things. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So, Faith in the fruit of the Spirit is the consistent manifest, manifesting of the faith that brought you to God and to salvation. Amen. You remember when you first got the Holy Ghost? How excited you were? Amen. You wanted to go tell everybody that God had done something new in your life, that your sins, you didn't even understand it all, but you wanted to tell everybody that you came in contact with. Well, truthfully, that's what God wants us to do on a consistent basis. Amen. God wants us to be faithful to his word. Amen. Praise God. He said that I would be a light in the middle of darkness, that we would be like a city set upon a hill, that we let our light shine, that others might see him in us and glorify him. Amen. There's another scripture that says, be ready to give every man an answer of the hope that is within you. Hallelujah. That we need to be ready, amen, to witness and to be a lighthouse and to be, test to be a testimony for God. 
So we can talk about faithfulness tonight. And the first thing we need to talk about is God's faithfulness. Amen. Praise God. There are many attributes that describe the characteristics and the nature of God. Amen. And we read some of them here in Galatians chapter 5. But besides love and peace, we also know that God is omniscient, right? Meaning that he, is, uh, he knows everything. Amen. He's omnipresent. That means that he is everywhere and there is nowhere that God is not. Amen. Praise God. He's omnipotent, meaning he has all power. There's nothing that God cannot do that when God speaks, it's going to happen. Amen. He's merciful. He's gracious. He's kind. Those are all attributes of God. Amen. So aren't you glad that God is faithful tonight? Praise God that God is faithful to forgive us of our sins that God is faithful to cleanse us of our unrighteousness, that God is faithful, amen, to be with us every step of the way, whether we deserve it or not. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll go with you all the way to the end of the world. Amen. Hallelujah. So God is faithful tonight. Amen. And as great as all these attributes are, the very thing that they rest upon is his faithfulness. Because if he was not faithful, the other attributes, amen, might as well be non-existing. Amen. We serve him because we know he is faithful. Do we not? I mean, we haven't made it to heaven yet. But we're serving him tonight with anticipation of that great day when the trumpet is going to sound and we're going to go home to be with him. We're trusting him to keep his word. Hello? Do you believe he'll keep his word? Amen. Praise God. So the scripture declares that God is faithful and that God is constant. Oh, praise God. Amen. For an example, Malachi 3 and 6 tells us, For I am the Lord, and I change not. Aren't you glad of that? That he's not wishy-washy, that he wants this one day and wants something else the next day? He says, I'm the Lord, I don't change. He said, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hebrews 13 and 8, that's the scripture, the same yesterday, today, and forever. I change not. Praise God. So we know what he wants, and we know what he expects, and therefore we can strive to be more like him because we know God is faithful. Praise God. Amen. He's faithful to his covenants. Deuteronomy 7 and 9 tells us, no, Know, therefore, that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. God is faithful tonight. He keeps his word. Praise God. Hallelujah. I don't have to worry Amen. Think about Noah. Amen. When God told Noah to get on the ark, take all those animals with him. I'm going to destroy the earth by water, but I'm going to spare everybody that's on the ark. So Noah built the ark. He obeyed God. And you know the story. And when the, the ark landed on dry land and they came off of the ark, what did God do? He put a rainbow in the sky declaring that he would never destroy the earth by water again. And we are still here today. And God is still keeping covenant. He's still keeping his word. Thank you, Jesus. You're faithful, God. You're faithful to us, Lord. Amen. Amen. We also know that God is faithful to our salvation. Amen. 
Acts 10 and 34 tells us, Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. Amen. Aren't you glad of that? The gospel's for you. It's for your children. It's for your grandchildren. It's to all them that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Amen. Hallelujah. He didn't say just the Jews could be saved. But he made a way for all of us to be saved. 1 Corinthians 1 and 9 tells us, God is faithful by whom ye were called unto the fellowship of his son of Jesus Christ our Lord. God is faithful by whom you were called. We didn't choose him. He chose us. He wooed us. He called us out of darkness. Amen. Aren't you glad he called you? Into his marvelous light. We are blessed people tonight. Second Peter 3 and 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises. As some men. Willing that any should perish. But that all should come to repentance. God is not slack concerning his promise. Thank you Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus that you are long suffering. Because I'm not perfect. I make mistakes. I mess up. I need to repent. I need to get right with God. Thank you that you just don't blot me out. Cut me off. Throw me into the fire. Amen. But he gives us a chance to repent. God is faithful during our trials and our tribulations. First. Corinthians 10, 13, he says, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. But with every temptation, make a way of escape that ye may be able to bear it. You're faithful, God. I know some of you think you've had all you can handle. Amen. But God says, I won't put more on you than you can handle. I've come to remind you that I'm with you every step of the way. Put your faith in me. Put your trust in me. Put your confidence in me. Know that I am faithful. I won't forget you. I won't let you down. I'll go with you every step of the way. Amen. 2 Thessalonians 3 and 3 says, but the Lord is faithful who shall establish you and keep you from evil. Oh, praise God. The Lord is faithful. He's going to keep you from evil. The angels of the Lord encampeth around the believer. Hallelujah. Praise God. When I see, he said, when he would see the blood, he'll pass over. We have the blood applied to our lives. Amen. We don't need to fear the devil. We don't need to fear death. We don't need to fear mankind. We need to just put our faith in him. Hallelujah. He'll never let us down. Hebrews 10, 23 says, Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. Amen. Let's hold fast our profession. Let us hold fast to the word of God. Let us hold fast to the truth of his word. Let us stand, amen, and call those things that are not as though they are. Why? Because God is faithful. Hallelujah. No weapon formed against me is going to prosper. God is faithful. I don't know when he's going to come through. I don't know how he's going to come through, but my God is going to come through. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And we talked about this the other day, amen. By his stripes, I am healed, amen. In the mind of God, it's already done. He already paid the penalty for your healing on the cross, amen. Praise God, hallelujah. You say, well, I'm still sick. Well, that's all right, amen. And even if God takes you home to heaven, amen, you're going to a better place, and if you're not healed down here, you're going to be healed over there. 
That may not be what you want to hear, but you need to be reminded this world is not our home. Praise God. We're just passing through. Amen. Give the Lord a clap offering of praise. Amen. And God is faithful even when we aren't faithful. 2 Timothy 2.13, he says, If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. Amen. God is still faithful even when we're not faithful to him. Amen. Kind of makes me want to serve him. How about you? Amen. There's no doubt in my mind that God is faithful. Amen. God is faithful. God will come through. God will do what he said he'll do. Amen. Praise God. Amen. We just got to wait on him. That's the hardest part. We don't like to wait. Amen. But we need to wait on him. So, amen. God is faithful. But how about us? How faithful are we? Amen. Since we have the Spirit or the Holy Ghost, then we have God's Spirit living in us. Amen. How many of you got the Holy Ghost? Amen. Well, if you've got the Holy Ghost, you've got God's Spirit living in you, and that means the faithfulness of God lives in you. Amen. Because God is faithful. You can't have his spirit and not have faithfulness at the same time. Praise God. Therefore, we need to manifest the fruit of the spirit of faithfulness. Being faithful to God. Amen. We must be faithful to God and we also must be faithful to other people. And we also need to be faithful to our responsibilities. Hello? Luke 17 and 5, the Bible says, And the apostle said unto the Lord, Increase our faith. Increase our faith. Amen. Now, what happens when you ask for God to increase your faith? Usually trials and tribulations come because we walk from faith to faith. Oh, I just want faith, God. I don't want the trial. But how can he increase your faith if you don't never go through anything? You have to go through some things once in a while in order for him to increase your faith. Amen. Praise God. And because we go through trials and tribulations and and God is faithful through those trials and tribulations, when we get to the other side, we can look back and say, God was faithful. And then it becomes a testimony of the power of God and God gets the glory and it increases your faith to believe God for bigger and better things. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. The disciples were expressing, amen, the way many of us feel. And we feel that if we had more faith, then we could be a better Christian. Amen. If we, how many of you think you'd be a better Christian if you had more faith? <laughs> Not sure whether to answer that, huh? All right. Amen. Well, let, let's, let's look, let me throw this at you. 1 Corinthians 4 and 2, he tells us, I, I thought I had it marked in my Bible, but I don't. So I'm turning there. He says, moreover, It is required in stewards, and we are the stewards of God's kingdom, that a man be found faithful. It is required 
that we be found faithful. In other words, God doesn't have much use for us if we're not faithful. Hello? He wants us to be consistent in the kingdom. Praise God. He showed us that he is faithful, but now he tells us he's requiring us to be faithful. Amen. Praise God. Romans 12 and 3 tells us that God has dealt all of us a measure of faith. Romans 12, 3. Amen. I'm waiting for him to get it up on the screen for you. Praise God. There you go. He says, For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. That's what we read in the beginning. But to think soberly according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Praise God. You have a measure of faith tonight. Amen. We just need to use our measure of faith. So Jesus goes on in the passage to tell them that they have faith, but what they need to do is go beyond what is expected of them. Amen. In other words, just because he's given us a measure of faith, that don't mean that we need to fold our arms and be content with that measure of faith. But we need to learn to exercise that faith. Amen. How do we learn to exercise it? Well, by doing the work of the kingdom. Amen. And also manifesting the fruits of the Spirit. Praise God. So faithfulness goes beyond duty and it goes beyond obligation and it responds to others out of love and out of gratitude. Amen. We pray for people in the altars not because we have to, But we pray for them because the love of Christ dwells in us and we want them to share the same experience that we have shared. Can I get an amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. So we don't serve God out of duty and obligation. We serve God out of love. The very first fruit of the Spirit. Now I know some folks probably serve God out of duty and obligation. But that's, they have no joy when they serve God strictly by a strict rule. That's what the whole Old Testament was all about, a bunch of rules. Hello? Amen. I, I can't do this on a Sabbath. I can't do that. I can't do something else. Amen. God doesn't want us to serve him out of obligation. God wants us to serve him out of love. Amen. I don't serve him. I didn't come tonight because I had to come. I come because I love him. Amen. God has been good to me. God has been faithful to me, and I want to be faithful to him. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. So, faithfulness, guess what? Keeps you committed even when the feeling isn't really there. Hello? Faithfulness. I am committed to God. Now let's be real. There's plenty of nights we don't want to come to church. But you know you ought to be here. Hello? And for whatever reason, there's something that motivates you to come. Even if I'm tired and weary, even if I don't really want to come, and even if I'm sitting on the pew thinking about all the things I got to do, hello? Listen, you made it this far. You might as well bring your thoughts into captivity. Amen. You might as well praise him and worship him and get something out of it. You've made the effort to get here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. But guess what? Let's be honest. We don't always have the feeling I want to go to church. But we don't walk by our feelings. We walk by faith. Faith and feeling is not the same thing. 
I know what I need to do. I know what God has commanded me to do. And therefore, I am going to be consistent and I am going to be faithful because that's what God expects out of me. Didn't get too many amens. Sister Dawn's out there saying amen. Praise God. But faithfulness will keep you committed. Something that is lacking in our world today. Because folks don't want to be committed to anything. Amen. And being committed is not a feeling. I serve God by faith. Amen. I know he's there. I know he's with me. I know that he will not fail me. I know that he will not leave me nor forsake me. Hallelujah. I know that he said that I should not neglect the assembling of myself together. Amen. But so much more as I see the day approaching. Amen. I should not put other things in front of serving God. Amen. For he is a jealous God. Amen. Hallelujah. I need to serve him with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my strength. Amen. I need to be faithful to him. Amen. And my faithfulness is not out of obligation, but it's out of commitment to him. Praise God. Matthew 24, verse 45. He said, Who then is faithful and wise servant whom his Lord made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season. He said, blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Amen. In other words, when God comes back, he is looking for faithful servants to be working in his field of labor. Amen. He is coming back after a people that's looking for his return. And not just sitting around twiddling their thumbs, but people that are working in the kingdom. You can't be a worker in the kingdom and not be faithful. Praise God. So Jesus considers the individual who is busy doing their own thing. Amen. The Lord com com commanded in his kingdom to be faithful and to be wise. Amen. So we read and let's read a portion of scripture in Matthew chapter 25. Amen. Beginning at verse 14. It's the parable of the talents. He said, for the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, and to every man according to his several ability, and straightway he took his journey. So God gave him an assignment. He gave him talents. Amen. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. He doubled his money. And the likewise, he that had received two had gained another two. And, but he that had received one went and digged in the earth and he hid his Lord's money. And after a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. And so he he that had received the five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents, and behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. He, his Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter into the joy, uh, hallelujah, of the Lord. God was proud of the man that multiplied his talents. He also that received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee a ruler over many things. 
Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. And then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art a hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown and gathering where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid, and I went and hid thy talent in the earth. And lo, there, though thou hast, that is thine. Amen. In other words, he didn't do anything but bury his talent. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not, and gather where I have not strawed. Thou gather, thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received mine own with usury. Take therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him which hath ten talents, for unto every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Hello? Yes, that's a parable. But the point is very clear that God expects us to return a harvest to him at his coming. Mm. That, that shakes me up a little bit because that tells me that God expects me to be a soul winner. God expects me to be a light in a darkened world. And the question then becomes, when we stand before God, are we going to have people standing next to us that we were responsible for? Or are we only going to stand before God and say, I made it, God. All by myself. And he's going to remind us that we're the ones with the one talent. That we didn't do anything with the talent that he gave us. We didn't do anything with the measure of faith that he gave us. Then he's going to remind us of that fig tree that he walked by. Didn't bear any figs and he said, cut it down and throw it into the fire. Amen. The thing that really gets my attention in the scripture is verse 30. He says, and cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. You know where outer darkness is? Hell. Amen. He said there's going to be, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Amen. I'm not trying to scare you tonight, but I want to tell you, God expects us to multiply our talent. God expects us to be witnesses in this present world. God expects us to let our light so shine. Hallelujah. Praise God. And in fact, he said, as, as I read to you that other scripture, he said, one, he's dealt to all of us a measure of faith. We have faith whether we recognize it or not. Amen. And he said, moreover, is it required of a steward to be found faithful? There's not going to be any time for excuses when the Lord of the harvest comes. Amen. Either we're going to be profitable in his kingdom or we're going to be unprofitable. Amen. I don't know about you, but I want to be profitable in the kingdom of God. I want to hear him say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Praise God. Amen. So, amen. Amen. So from this passage, we see that God has entrusted people with valuables in his kingdom. We are the valuables of God. We are his hands. We are his feet. We are his voice tonight. Praise God. We are valuable in the king's sight. We've heard that so much that it doesn't even phase us anymore. We don't even get excited about it anymore. Oh, yeah, I'm a child of God. Amen. 
But if you would ever get a grip on how valuable you are in the kingdom of God, if we would ever understand that God could have chose anybody else, but he chose you and me. We are a minority in this world. Amen. But little is much when God is in it. Little is much when God is in it. And God is not finished with us yet. And somehow, I believe in this last day, he's going to take the tail and make the, the head. Hallelujah. We've got to let our light shine. We've got to be a light that shines in darkness. We've got a people, we've got to be a people that's not afraid to say, hey, I'm a born again Christian. I'm an apostolic. I'm a born again believer. Amen. As uh, uh, that one songwriter said, I, I'm, a, I, uh, I'm a one God apostolic. Yeah, that's it. That's what I was trying to remember. Praise God. Amen. Many of you don't even know what I'm talking about. Praise God. Hallelujah. But I'm not ashamed to be called a Christian. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm not ashamed to be called a holy roller. I'm not ashamed to say, oh, you're one of those tongue talkers. That's right, I am. I'm proud to tell you, I am proud to be a born-again Christian. Amen. I'm valuable in the kingdom of God. I am profitable to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He has given me something that I never had before. And I, for one, am so grateful for what God has given unto me and how he has blessed me and how he has increased me. Amen. And if I'm anything tonight, it's only because of what he has done in my heart and in my mind and in my soul tonight. Amen. Yes, I'm a servant servant of the King of Kings. Yes, I'm a servant of the Lord of Lords. Amen. Yes, I've been born of the water and born of the Spirit, and my God has been faithful to me. Amen. Therefore, I want to represent Him well. I want to put on the Lord Jesus Christ. I want the mind of Christ to be in me. I want to be a light that shines in darkness. I want to represent my King to the best of my ability. Why? Because I I don't want to be an unprofitable servant. I want to be profitable in his sight. I want to be what God has called me to be. I want to let my light shine. I want others to know how greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. When he came back and he saw the servant that only hid his talent. In other words, his faith didn't matter at the Lord's return because he didn't have very much of it. Amen. His excuses did not matter when the master came back. We can make all the excuses we want, but your excuses and my excuses aren't going to matter when the king comes back. Amen. What mattered was his lack of faithfulness. Amen. And his lack of profitability. I don't want to hear him say, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. I want to hear him say, well done, thou good and thou faithful servant. Praise God. Amen. Luke 16 and 10, he said, He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. Amen. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. If therefore ye have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, amen, who will commit to your trust the true riches? Amen. In other words, if we can't even be faithful in unrighteous things, how can God entrust us with the riches of his kingdom? Amen. Amen. I want to be faithful to God. I want God to trust me. Amen. I want God to be proud of me. Amen. I want to serve him with all my heart. God's looking for faithfulness, church. Amen. 
Hallelujah. A people that's called by his name. A people that's not ashamed to lift him up. A people, amen, that not just talk the talk, but also walk the walk, if you will. A people that have the mind of Christ in them. Amen. A people that put on the robe of righteousness. Amen. Praise God. And we walk in the power of his might. So God is looking for you and I to be faithful tonight. You say, well, what does God expect from me? Well, God expects us to be faithful in our prayer life. Hello. God expects us to be faithful when reading his word. God expects us to be faithful in fasting. God expects us to be faithful in our church attendance. God expects us to be faithful in our tithes and our offerings. God expects us to be faithful in our service and in our ministry. Amen. God expects us to be faithful in witnessing and outreach. Hello? Praise God. That's how we're faithful to God in all of those different areas of our lives. Amen. We also are called by God. He says, amen, that we, he said, by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples if you have love one towards another. So we demonstrate our faithfulness to God by also demonstrating our faithfulness to other people. Amen. We are responsible, amen, to be faithful in our relationships. Hello? Amen. You're my brother. You're my sister. I need to be faithful to my family. Amen. We are to manifest faithfulness and consistency with one another. In other words, if you tell somebody you're going to do something... Do it. Don't be a liar. (laughs) When I was building the church, it drove me up the wall. People tell me, we'll be there on Monday to hang the drywall. Two weeks later, they still weren't here. Amen. Be faithful. Be be a person of your word. Amen. 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 The Holy Ghost within us, amen, will help us to be consistent and to be faithful. Mm. Amen. You know, I don't know about you, but when, when when I'm someplace and I know that I should be someplace I'm not, like church, I get convicted. I need to be in church. Amen. Now, some people have missed church so much that it don't faze them. That's a whole nother story. But that, that conviction is good because that means God is working on your heart. Amen. Amen. We're to be faithful in our friendships. Amen. Proverbs 17 and 17 says, A friend loveth at all times. Hello? A friend loveth at all times. Not just when it's convenient. Proverbs 18, 24. A man that hath friends must show himself friendly. I've heard people say, I have no friends in that church. Well, how friendly are you? Hello. I mean, there's plenty of us here. (laughs) You're waiting on somebody to do something for you. Why don't you do something for somebody else? You know, I mean, you want friends? Why don't you invite somebody to dinner? Instead of waiting for somebody to invite you to dinner. Oh, that's a, okay. Proverbs 27 and 10, thine own friend and thy father's friend forsake not. Amen. Don't forsake your friends. We need to be faithful in our marriages. Hello? The Bible tells us, 
In Ephesians 5.31, For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall become one flesh. Amen. Faithfulness in marriage is the only way to stay one flesh. Hello? Amen. You destroy your marriage, amen, when you're not faithful to one another. Praise God. Amen. The Bible tells us to be faithful in our business relationships. Amen. Praise God. Acts 6 and 3 says, Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. Amen. People that are full of the Holy Ghost and people that have an honest report. Put them in charge of the business. Amen. Amen. It also talks about in 1 Timothy 3 and 7, amen, that moreover he must have a good report of them which are without. Amen. Amen. We need to have a good report, if you will, or a good reputation, if you will. Amen. Praise God. So be faithful in all things. Be faithful in church. Be faithful in the things of God. Be faithful in your relationships with others. Be faithful in your marriage. Be faithful in your business dealings. Hello? In other words, Christians pay their bills. You don't file for bankruptcy. Amen, oh me, thank you, Jesus. Amen. So, there are rewards for our faithfulness. Amen. Talk about some of our leaders in the Bible. Abraham, his reward was he became the father of many nations. Amen. Moses, he became the deliverer of Israel. Amen. David, he, he became the established leader and the lineage of where Jesus or the Messiah came from. Amen. Simon Peter, amen, was the birthing, preached the birthing message for the New Testament church. Amen. Praise God. So many rewards are going to be given to these great men of God. Amen. We are blessed, church. We are blessed. Amen. So, again, the word of God emphasizes the rewards of our faithfulness unto him. Psalms 31, 23 tells us, For the Lord preserveth the faithful, and the plentiful rewardeth the proud doer. Amen. Amen. Proverbs 28 and 20, a faithful man shall abound with blessings. Amen. Anybody want to abound with blessings? A faithful man shall abound with blessings. Matthew 25, 21, he, his Lord said unto him, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Amen. He said, enter into the joy of the Lord. Amen. Our reward is in heaven. Our reward is in heaven. Amen. We must be faithful. Amen. We are living in the last day, and God is about to come after his church. It's not a day to become slack. It's not a day to become lukewarm or indifferent in our spirits, but it's a day to be full of the power of the Holy Ghost. It's a day to be excited. It's a day to look for the king to come. Amen. Amen. Paul said, I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who has enabled me for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. Amen. God put him into the ministry. Praise God. 2 Corinthians 11 verse 23. I want to close with this. Amen. Paul's writings, and he says, Are they ministers of Christ? Amen. He says, Okay, good. You got it on the screen for me. 
my print's almost too little for me to read. Amen. He says, I speak as a fool. I am more in labors, more abundant, in stripes, above measure, in prisons, more frequent, in death, oft. Of the Jews, five times received I forty stripes, save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods, and once was I stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck a night and a day. I have been in the deep, in journeyings often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils of mine own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among, amen, false brethren. In weariness, painfulness, and watchings often, in hunger and thirst, and fastings often, in cold and nakedness. Beside those things that are without that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches. Amen. Who is weak and I am not weak? Who is offended and I burn not? Amen. Praise God. If I must needs glory, I will glory of the things which concern my infirmities. Hallelujah. In other words, Paul went through all this stuff. Amen. Shipwreck. Imprisoned. Amen. Mistreated. Amen. And he says, I must needs glory. He says, I will glory of the things which concern my infirmities. In other words, he's saying to us, God has been faithful in all things. God has been faithful. We haven't gone through half the stuff that Paul went through. Amen. We haven't gone through stuff like the apostles went through. If you ever read Fox's books of Mar- Book of Martyrs and find out about how all the apostles paid or died, if you will. Amen. Many of them, amen, were hung on a cross and some of them upside down and, and, and all the horrible deaths that they, they died. Amen. Why? Because they were lifting up the name of Jesus. Because they wouldn't forsake the name. Amen. Praise God. We haven't endured anything comparatively. Amen. So what am I saying? You can make it. You can do it. Amen. You can do it. Amen. Be faithful to God. Be faithful to God. God is commanding us to be faithful. I want to be faithful to him. Amen. Faithful to love other people. Faithful to have joy in my spirit. Faithful to have the peace of God. Faithful to be long-suffering. Faithful in gentleness. Faithful in goodness. Faithful in faith. Hallelujah. For without him, I can do nothing. But with him, I can do all things through Christ. Brother Vogler just preached to us about saying that. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. But it's still true. I can do it with him. Because greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. I can be faithful. Amen. I want to be faithful. Because I want to hear him say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Let's stand together tonight. We'll be dismissed. Amen. Father, we love you. We're grateful for your word tonight. Your word is a lamp into our feet, a light into our pathway. Help us, God, to be more like you. Help us to put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Let the mind of Christ be in us. Let the fruit of the Spirit be manifested through us. Help us to be a light that shines in darkness. Help us to be a living epistle known and read of all men for your name's sake, Lord. Help us to represent you well. Help us to be working in your kingdom.
kingdom. Help us to be laborers in your kingdom. Help us to be faithful servants in your kingdom, God. We pray tonight, Lord, not our will, but thine be done. Use us for your glory and use us for the upbuilding of thy kingdom. I pray, Lord, let there be a special anointing upon your people and a special blessing upon your people. Meet every need, I pray. Let your will be done. I just give you the glory. I give you the honor. I give you the praise tonight, God, in the wonderful and the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody say amen. Amen and amen. God bless you tonight. You're dismissed in the name of the Lord.